everyone, I'm Natasha, and today I have three cards to share featuring the latest Mama Elephant release. I'm focusing on the Gingerbread Cookies set, but I'll also be using the Mixed Holiday Greetings and some previously released items, the Slim Card Basics die set and an older sentiment set called Holiday Messages. I am watercoloring the background for my first card. So I have already taped down some watercolor paper to a board with some thin washi tape so th that I can have a thin margin on my background panel. So I'm just getting my palette started here. I'm using a glass media mat as my work surface. The distress inks I'm using for my watercolor paints are Mermaid Lagoon, Chip Sapphire, Stormy Sky, and Faded Jeans. Next I'm spritzing both the inks and the paper with water. So this allows the inks to be easier to work with and then the wet paper gives the ink something to react with when I start painting. So as I paint, I'm not putting too much thought into how the, the color gets applied to the paper. I'm just letting the water help with the flow and mix of the inks. This gives it just a kind of nice organic look. Once I'm happy with the base of the color, I'll heat set it with my embossing tool. There are a few little shapes in the gingerbread cookie set, so I decided to put some of them to use here just to add a bit more interest to my background. So I'm using some of the same inks that I painted with, and I'm just gonna start stamping the small circle image randomly. Lastly, I cannot seem to make a watercolor background lately without a little bit of splatter. So I add a bit more ink to my palette. I'm watering it down, load up my brush, and I just splatter it all over. I heat set this again so I can remove the tape and have it ready for the rest of the card. When removing the tape, do so very slowly and try to pull it away on itself. This helps to prevent any damage to the paper. Because I'm using cotton paper here though, it still ended up pulling up a little bit of the paper, but I was able to buff out the tiny marks just using my detailer tool. So now we're ready for the coloring. I've stamped and cut out the little milk bottle, the plate of cookies, as well as the card. These were just stamped in rich cocoa memento ink, which is a Copic friendly ink. I'll be coloring these in Copics and I'll have the colors I use listed on screen.
So now that that's all colored, we're ready for assembly. So I'm just going to attach the three colored elements. I'll start with the plate, because that's going to be furthest back. I'll just add one layer of foam tape to that. And then next I'll do the milk bottle, which gets a double layer of foam so it pops up a little higher. And lastly, the little card for Santa will be off to the right. For my next card, I'll be doing some embossed resist. So I've already stamped and embossed a panel of the little gingerbread people in several lines. Uh, but first I'll just do my sentiment tag. I've got a thin banner tag die cut here. And I'm using a greeting from the Holiday Messages set. This is a great set with a lot of options. And it's just a basic typewriter style font that goes with everything. For the background, as I mentioned before, I've already uh, pre-embossed it. Um, so I just stamped several of the gingerbread people uh, using Versamark and then I embossed that with white embossing powder. The panel is on 110 pound cardstock and it's trimmed down to five inches by three and three quarter inches. So I'm using regular distress inks here. Tea dye will make up the majority of my background and I'm applying this with a blender brush but a sponge would have worked fine here as well. Now that I'm all done with the tea dye, I'm using a little bit of the ground espresso ink just to go around the edges. This gives it a bit more dimension and it kind of gives it that golden cookie appearance. And then once that's done, because a background just isn't complete without a bit of texture, I'm again using a bit of the ground espresso as paint. I'm just gonna add a bit of water and I'll be splattering that all over. This is also why I like using the 110 pound cardstock, as it can hold up to a little bit of water if you're deciding to add splattering to a basic blended background. When doing embossed resist, be sure to grab a small cloth of some kind and wipe it all over all of the embossed images. This helps to remove any ink that's sitting on the embossed images and it really helps them pop. So once again, the coloring here is pretty basic. It's just two small images, but as before, I'll include the colors I've used on the screen uh, so you can follow along. Now it's on to the assembly. So first I'm attaching the background to my card base, just using some foam tape. And then I'm also going to use foam tape to attach the sentiment banner. And then lastly, I'll use a like, bit more foam tape for the gingerbread person. I'm just gonna line that up directly on top of one of the background panel gingerbread people.
The very last thing I'm doing here is just touching up my white highlights because uh, I noticed they kind of faded out. And that's it for this card. This last card is quite simple. I'm using the Slim Card Basic Dies. I use the scallop piece, the stitched panel, as well as the smaller shapes. They're somewhat rounded rectangles, but I'm just going to refer them as the oval pieces going forward. So when preparing for this, I positioned the oval pieces on the stitched panel, and I made sure I had room for my sentiment. I taped the oval pieces in place with some washi tape, and then I ran that through my die cutting machine, and what you get you'll see here. So this was completed with the cute sentiment from the Mixed Holiday Greetings, and I die cut that out of some craft paper. However, I also die cut the oval pieces from white cardstock because I wanted to inset those into the openings. Now you will see me fuss with all these little gingerbread people deciding how I want to arrange them before I'm going to color them. When I make cards with a lot of elements, I spend quite a bit of time arranging them, and once I'm happy, I snap a photo on my phone so I can reference it. I also tend to stamp and cut out more elements than required because I like to have options. The colouring for all of these is quite similar to the previous cards. As cute as it would be to make them non-traditional cookie colours, I just decided to carry on with the various brown shades. To make them a bit different from the previous cards, I added a lot of dots, just using a brown pen. Adding dots in the form of little freckles or just elsewhere on the image can help create a bit more depth and interest. So like before, I'll just have the colours that I use on screen. I've attached foam tape on all my elements, and now I'm using liquid glue on the craft panel to adhere to the red scallop piece. I'm using liquid glue because it allows for a bit of wiggle room if I need to adjust it. I'm also going to use liquid glue on the white ovals for the same reason. Now for the final assembly, attaching all the gingerbread people. This is pretty straightforward. I'm just positioning them kind of based on how I had before they were colored. 
Uh, if you wanted to step up the card, though, you could add some more texture to the craft before you attach it to the panel. You could add some ink splatters or perhaps by stamping some of the small shapes from the gingerbread cookie set on the white oval pieces. You could also add some embellishments such as sequins or rhinestones. Lots of possibilities here for sure. I decided to keep it relatively simple just to show how easily replicable it can all be. Now you'll see me fuss with the hat. I had decided that I'd put it way too high, so I just removed it and moved it down a bit. So there you have it. Three cards featuring the fun new set, gingerbread cookies. I love buying new holiday themed products, but I wanna make sure to challenge myself to make at least a few different designs to make sure I'm maximizing its usage. Thanks for watching. I hope you feel inspired.